Hey everybody, today I will show you how you can recreate this gouache landscape. I'm using this handmade palette, some Winsor & Newton designers gouache, several sizes of brushes, this Hahnemühle watercolor paper, it's cold pressed. And I'm already starting to set up my palette and I'm using most of the colors in the set, I would say. At first I was using that cadmium red, but then I realized I actually meant to use the primary red. So later on, I'm also going to add the primary red in because it is more of a cool tone. And so it's easier to blend purple tones and stuff like that. You can see that I'm already starting with the foreground and kind of blending all of that. So I started actually with my art orange tone and now I'm making a gradient into more of a blue tone and in between that we have the green tones. So we have a variety of different green tones depending on how the light falls. So the light comes from the top and that's where the green tones are going to be the lightest and the warmest color and then towards the bottom of all of our hills the green tones are going to be the coolest and the darkest. So I actually tried to get as many colors into those hills as possible. That's why I actually used the orange and even went into kind of a purple tone towards the bottom. I really wanted to have a very vibrant and colorful piece. And so this is why I picked all of those colors and just tried my best to blend them Gouache is very forgiving with that in that it can already be a little bit dry and you can still blend it. Of course, it's a bit easier to blend it when it is still wet, but if you have a good quality paint and paper, you can always go in later and still blend it pretty, pretty well. And so I love to do gradients like that with gouache. And I feel like it almost, the first layer almost looks a little bit like watercolors. That's because I added quite a lot of water to the first layers. I always do that and then I build my colors later and add more colors in later. You can see in the sky now, I added in our primary red that I was talking about earlier. So it's a little bit more on the pink and purple side and a little Little bit of a cooler and more vibrant tone and I'm kind of blending all of that a little bit it's a sunset so it can be a little bit messy I assume there would be clouds or some texture in this sky so this is kind of what I'm trying to convey here I know that this tutorial is on the faster side, but don't worry, I have another free live gouache class coming up it's gonna be this Saturday and I will teach you how to recreate a simple gouache painting step by step and it will be live so you will have the option to ask questions about it. And if you can't attend live, you can still sign up for the class and I will send you the replay afterwards. And you will have a week to watch the replay so you can watch it on your own time if you want to. If you already have questions, please put them in the chat. It can be general art related questions or gouache questions. And I can also write those down for the class and answer them there in addition to the live questions. So I will leave a link in the description box with all of the information, the specific time and how to sign up. Again, it's going to be a free live class. So I really urge you to be there and I'm looking forward to it. So now I'm starting to paint the flowers in the foreground. Those are purple poppies and I mix this tone. It's a very pinkish purple tone and it's not on the completely light and not on the completely dark side, meaning it's kind of a mid-tone color. So we can later on add in some details with shadows and highlights. And I'm just mapping out where all of my flowers are going to be. And I'm painting them in different sizes, mostly making sure that the bigger ones are more towards us. And now I'm using a very dark tone and starting to color in our mountains and this is kind of a dark purple tone and I'm also 
trying to add a bit of a texture to the mountain and this paint is pretty thin meaning I added quite a bit of water to it so all of it is a little bit translucent at that point. We're still on the first layer with these mountains and you can see it's very very watery and I just love to use gouache like that. Use it to all of its best abilities at first kind of getting watercolor effects and then later on building it up and making use of the fact that it is an opaque medium and if you have a good paper then you can really go ahead and use it like that and just build your colors over time and not add very thick layers right from the start. I know a lot of people really don't like that. They want to go in with thick layers right away. I know a lot of artists do that as well, but it's just not the way that I work and not the way that I love to use gouache because you can see you can get these watercolor effects. You could alternatively also start with watercolors to get an even brighter tone and get all of these effects. Sometimes I love to mix both both of these mediums and then you just add all of your opaque layers with your gouache. In that case you just have to make sure that the watercolors and the gouache kind of go together and don't look very strange to each other because sometimes it can appear as though the gouache is just sitting on top and doesn't really belong in the picture. So that's why I mostly then go ahead and add the watercolor effects with the gouache because it still dries a little bit more matte than watercolors would. You can see that I'm now adding in the little details on the grass. These are just tiny little lines and I used various colors for this. Lighter green tones, muted white tones. I used some more opaque lines with more paint and some more of on the transparent side with a little bit more water. So we have a little bit of a variety there. I also added in a little bit of a highlight to our hill here in the background and carefully blended that in and I also thought that the mountains could use a little bit more color and a little bit more green and so I added in my orange and my green tone and I think that it looks pretty good. I actually managed to achieve some glazing here which isn't always good with gouache doesn't always work that well so if this looks a little bit messy that's okay just try to blend it in a little bit and don't really stress too much about it because those are mountains and they should have a texture. They don't have to look perfect. They don't look perfect in nature either. So this is what I did here and now I'm adding in my shadows to my poppies and I also switched to a smaller brush. I'm using different kinds of brands. Honestly, I still haven't found the one and only perfect brush brand for my gouache because I am pretty rough on my brushes and so they don't last. I have to admit they don't last very long. I usually have a brush uh, from ranging from a few weeks to maybe a couple of months and then I kind of have to replace it because it's not as it doesn't come to a thin point anymore. Sometimes I even use scissors and cut them to a thin point again and I find that my brushes aren't just aren't that durable with my gouache because gouache is very rough on the brushes and I don't perfectly clean them all the time so well that's just who I am and the ADHD tax that I have to pay I guess with my brushes I just have to get new ones all the time and luckily I get sent quite a few so when people ask me what my favorite brushes are I'm always kind of stunned and don't know what to say because they change rapidly. I have, this is what my favorite brush right now. It's from Pan Art and it's a size two round brush, but uh, it, it just changes all the time. And I, 
I always use the brush that works best for what I'm going for, if that makes any sense. So for the first layers, I would always use a bigger brush. And then when I add the details, I use the brush that comes to the thinnest point that I own. So the smallest, most detailed brush is the one that I'm going for. And also you can't use a completely tiny brush because it will not really hold your gouache that well. So uh, I think it takes a little bit of experimentation. Usually I find that synthetic brushes work best. And you can see now I'm starting to paint a little house here in our background. And I just used white straight out of the tube. I think this is titanium white. It is not the white that comes with the Winsor & Newton set, but I bought several tubes of this white because you always need white. And this one is very, very opaque and it is pretty good to work with. It has a really nice consistency, especially coming out of the tube. It's super creamy and easy to work with. You can see how opaque that was and how well it layered. So I really urge you to buy some titanium white tubes because they work really well with all of your other colors, no matter what brands you use. And you can see that I'm now adding the stems and the leaves to our poppies. I do that while the house is drying because I want to add the roof still and I will do that when the house is dry. So now I'm just adding in some leaves, some stems and just here and there trying to keep it a little bit messy because in nature everything is a little bit messy and if you make it too organized it doesn't really look realistic anymore. And now I'm painting the rooftop of this house or rather probably a church building or something like that and I used this very dark red dare I say a maroon color also added in some highlights on the left because I was looking at a reference picture and it was looking like that it was kind of on an angle I'm not sure if I managed to convey that that it is on an angle and that the side is kind of lit up a little bit in hindsight I kind of wish that I didn't do that I don't know looking back at it I don't like it as much but hey I added in a few windows and overall I'm pretty happy with how it looks now and this is already the finished piece. Again, don't forget to sign up to my free life class. If you want to learn more about gouache, here's a video on the biggest mistakes people make when they first start to use gouache. And you could make your life a lot easier by avoiding them. So watch this video next.